you find this uh, jump from uh, um, Peach Dragon to now Ghost Story, and now you have another one, a big one coming out soon too. Like, what what kind of drove you to this film? And, and I'd be interested to know if there anything that you really personally kind of creatively gained um, through going through shooting this film. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I had we Toby and I did Peach Dragon together with Disney, and that was an amazing experience. Like, we just loved it, and it was really fun. And but while we were, you know, it takes a long time. You know, those movies take the time they need. And while we were in post production, I had this idea for us this this movie. And you know, my tastes and interests run in all shapes and sizes. And I thought it would be fun to go just do something like this after finishing Beach Dragon to go just test some new creative muscles, try some new ideas, explore some new creative directions, and and just you know. Make a movie that we were all just as excited by as we were with, with Peach Dragon, but to make something that was just completely different and just test out some new muscles. As a director, one of the things that I think is really important is just keep directing things because you often, you know, you spend a year or two making a movie and when you're not on set, you you sort of like lose the you, you know in between projects you sort of lose the you, you kind of get soft a little bit and to go make this film um, so quickly after making the other one reminded me it, it, it taught me a lot about myself creatively like what I'm good at what I'm interested in the things that I like and also you know I'll be able to take the lessons I learned on this one into the next film even though it's a completely different film again um, so it was just very helpful for me to just make something again quickly because if you wait too long and it's fine to, I'll just forget who I am as a director. So, I don't know if Toby has a different answer. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the need to consistently be making something and creating something and we have a, yeah. We just have lots of ideas and they're, they're, running, they're running all shapes and sizes. And nobody's gonna stop you from making it. Exactly. That's the idea. Um, so, origin, I'd like to hear maybe a little bit more about what was the kind of origin idea that you were looking to just explore and got excited about. Um, well, my wife Augustine is here in the audience, and I love her very much. We did have an argument one time about about where we were going to live, and we were, you know, she wanted to live one place, I wanted to live somewhere else, and and it was a it was a difficult decision to make, a very small scale thing, but it felt huge at the time, and that's sort of where this movie came from, oddly enough, and then on top of that, all these other ideas I had, you know, I have a lot of anxiety about our place in the universe and about time and this was a way to work through some of those anxieties and I just also really like the idea of a guy wearing a sheep hunting house. So <laughs> I kind of took all of those things and and broke them down into a, a ten page script which then became a much bigger script which Toby and James said we should definitely try to make. And made some new anxieties. Lots of new anxieties. <laughs> new things to work through. Yeah. Well, now just about the sheet. Maybe, maybe we should discuss the sheet. Like, how, how deep were the discussions about the sheet? Like, what, what were the ideas behind it? Like, go for it now. Oh, man. Um, it's not as easy. I will say that. Uh, we, we, no, it's, David just said, he's going to wear a sheet. Um, so, <laughs> we, did, we did some color testing. We talked about, like, giving him personality. Um, I, I mean, and then just ended up basically deciding that we were going to do, kind of just go straight for it, and then he has kind of a, this little monotone face that you kind of impress yourself upon, um, as a viewer, or at least I always do, I always <laughs> feel what he's feeling, so. Um, Midway through the shoot, we realized that now uh, it was also about the kids. Yes, there's lots of it, stuff underneath. It's, it's not just a sheet, it's a huge outfit, and it's really hot to wear that in the summer. And then in addition to wearing it, um, I want to give a shout out to our art director, David Pink, who kind of helped us figure out how to actually make this thing work um, when there's an actor inside that you can't see. So it was a, it was like a helmet and a petticoat, and just also there's so many different layers to that thing. Much more complex than the sheet. Uh, Pete's Dragon also started with the uh, car wreck as kind of the catalyst. Is um, is that coincidence, or is there sort of something that intrigues you about beginning a movie that way? Or Ooh, that's a that? good, that's a total question. I'll just repeat it for people in the back, but Pete's Dragon also started with the car wreck, so. I guess it's a good, inciting incident, but I, I've i literally never made that connection before. But <laughs> yes. I've also never been in a car accident before, so. 
I didn't write the car accident into this one, but I think it fits. I don't know, that's part of the anxiety, which is a constant anxiety of car accidents. Like, I don't know, I mean. I mean, the longer I go without being one, the more the stakes go up. Awesome. Uh, it was a very, very uh, visually bold film, and I was hoping you could speak some about the cinematography. I mean, we definitely took a very bold approach, but I'm going to pass it over to our cinematographer, Andrew. And is there anything in particular? Or I just guess, uh, well, the, the aspect ratio was kind of atypical. Um, yeah. What was the thought process behind that? Yeah, it was a long discussion for us, um, but it was always for it was. Well, initially, when we first gave it to me, we were like, it's going to be 4-3. Yeah, initially the idea was that we were going to have yeah. kind of this guy with the goes just box in, so I like, yeah. box him in. And it proved to be a very challenging aspect ratio yeah. because we've never done it before, and, and it's not as easy as we thought it was going to be. Yeah, we, we both, when we would sort of frame things up or discuss shots before we started shooting, we would keep describing shots that were impossible for us to do in 4-3. And then we, I think even like on our first day, we were just like finding our way. I mean, for the we reshot the entire first day. Yeah. It was, it was definitely like, you know, we had a really bold approach to the movie that we knew we wanted it to be these striking tableaus that would last for a long period of time. And they needed to hold up for that period of time that we'd be looking at them. But we also found ourselves consistently reinventing our approach every time. You know, the movie goes through several different modes and like when the, when the family moves in or during the party scene, like we were just consistently shaping, reshaping how we were shooting the movie. And by the end of it, we kind of knew what we were doing, but for the first couple of days, we were. I was just gonna say, I mean, that was like our, uh, the general conversation every morning was like, what movie are we shooting today? <laughs> like, what? Well, maybe let's bring out some Zoom. Today's the Zoom's day. Yeah. Like, today's the Dolly day. Like, Every family sort of got their own look, and the Pioneers had this really long lens look, and the Latino family that moved in was that very roving camera, wide angle look, and um, it was like a really interesting exploration each each day. Yeah. What also, yeah. also we both, in terms of the aspect ratio, just love four three, and it's hard to be able to shoot in that aspect ratio. So this felt like a film that would afford us that adventure. One more. Yeah, did you um, always intend for the pie eating scene to end with her vomiting, or did it just happen? <laughs> I told her to just eat the pie until she couldn't eat anymore, and then do whatever came naturally. <laughs> Let's give a final round of applause to the behind the door.